What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're actually going to be talking about Spider-Man 4, the MCU Spider-Man 4 that we know is going to be coming out at some point in the near future with Tom Holland, of course, expected to reprise his role as Peter Parker's Spider-Man. And of course, the recent reports coming out that the interest is or the expectation at this point is in Dale will be back, John Watts will be back, and uh, they'll have the whole band back together, I guess. That has caused a lot of people to, of course, jump to certain conclusions that I've already done a video about that. But what we're going to talk about in this instance for this time in respect to Spider-Man 4 is how it can be better than No Way Home. And now I'm going off of an article that I discovered, not only just ways it can be better than No Way Home, but things this one can just do to just be a solid movie coming out of a overly successful, overly well-received, overly well-deserved conclusion in that trilogy, his origin trilogy with Spider-Man No Way Home. There's no need to rush into something like that again. There's no need to rush and outdo yourself, try to do anything like that. What was so unique with No Way Home is that everything that we get in that movie was something that was already built up to. You have the you have everything coming to fruition with how we've already started out with the trilogy from Spider-Man No, from Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, all of those two that came before uh, No Way Home how it culminates into this celebration of spider-man now of course what they end up doing if they try to outdo themselves in the future spider-man 6 isn't something that i think will feel as earned considering no way home is 20 years worth of spider-man content a big giant love letter to it but in respect to tom holland what they can do to start off with is that this is coming from amy pascal who points out that they could bring they could bring the emotion back again by going into a comment she made she said you can't think about topping yourself in terms of spectacle otherwise movies just get larger and larger for no reason and it's not a good result but we do want to always try and top ourselves in terms of quality and emotion now again spider-man 4 could easily bring in the emotion that we saw in spider-man no way home with the loss of his aunt may and how that impacted him and how they were starting to take him down a dark path that we know we saw in sam raimi spider-man 3 when it relates to peter and his loss of uncle ben uh, we know how uh, t how Andrew Garfield's Peter was affected by the death of Gwen. All of these things could be used or revisited. Something emotional could still be used in Spider-Man 4 as it pertains to Peter. So she went on to also say that Kevin and herself never want to lose sight of sight of one thing. Peter Parker, that he's a normal kid, that he is orphaned over and over again, that he's a teenager. So everything in his life is at a heightened pitch and everything matters more than anything that he's fueled by goodness and guilt that he's striving for a greater cause and that he's vilified by the press so going into that it's in it's nice to know that they have an interest in or that they have an interest in trying to give you a emotional arc to get invested in more so than just throwing so many nostalgic aspects at you and hoping something sticks you know that's why i started off by stating with no way home that was something that felt earned and the way that movie was able to juggle so many different things is still something that's very special and something that isn't uh, accomplished very well in most cases i would say for a lot of other movies that try to juggle too many things at once with all these different subplots i'm not saying that there weren't some issues with certain subplots but no way home still was very cohesive as a whole so the fact that they would rather take an approach that is i guess starting from clean starting a clean slate letting us see peter in college letting us see how he's interacting with other people how has he moved on from the events of no way home how has aunt may's death impacted him has he become a loner or something like that because the other thing that they talked about in this article here was going into bringing up the fact that spider-man 4 could focus on peter's friends or lack thereof so again seeing how all the events from no way home have impacted him is he cut off from people does he not have as many have as many friends as he did before is he limiting himself from having as many friends as he had before because of the fact that with his origin trilogy in high school who he's actually become grown into now at this point that was his origin trilogy of being spider-man he understands all the risk involved in it now he's going to do certain things differently now going into his adult 
adulthood going into college so he might limit his friends that he has you could give us a narrative in which we have peter who is in a lonely scenario but he's also of course still someone who is open to the idea of friends but also reluctant to let people in because of all the hardship that he went through in the past and he doesn't want anyone to go he doesn't want to go through that again with anyone else like he did with mary jane and ned now the idea of introducing ned and mary jane again in this trilogy i'm not against it as much as i would prefer you don't do it so early on let us experience something new with him let us see his new struggles let us see how he navigates in his new walk of life in college let us see a new love interest let us see a new group of friends maybe one or two at best and a new love interest and then have it all culminate in your spider-man 6 in my head i'm thinking of a spider-man 6 where you have peter back uh that of course being andrew and toby's peters <laughs> and then also throw in miles morales hopefully in some way if you can make that happen and have all of these things culminate into a spider-man 6 movie where you have ned and mj find out that peter used a spell on them all those years ago and he can get confronted with all of his stuff that he's had going on from the past to the present and it could be one last hurrah for tom holland's portrayal of peter parker in spider-man 6 i wouldn't jump right into the college trilogy wiping away what happened to the end of no way home and then say hey i'm back with um uh, I'm back with MJ, Ned still here, and you know, it's nothing different. I wouldn't do anything like that. We need to see a new Peter Parker in this movie. So they also talked about how they could bring in the symbiote. Now, we know in the end of No Way Home, there's that post credit scene that did confirm that the symbiote is in the MCU. So factoring in Venom and giving us a Spider-Man versus Venom scenario in the MCU, that could kind of, I guess, be a kind of a uh, better version of what you had i know a lot of people are still disappointed by how venom was portrayed in the sam raimi spider-man 3 so now you have a chance to wipe the slate clean in that regard put a little bit more of a satisfying taste in your mouth as a viewer who's a fan of venom fan of the spider-man versus venom rivalry and see it depicted on screen a lot better uh probably have a lot better visuals see it integrated into the story a little bit better because i know some people have gripes with how late in the narrative of spider-man 3 venom was introduced from sam raimi's film so introducing the symbiote i'm all for that again exploring the darker side of peter because we saw glimpses of that in no way home how green goblin managed to bring out a darker side of him because of what he did to aunt may so bringing in venom the symbiote and giving us a more darker style or darker side of peter and seeing how he kind of fights his way out of it maybe he remembers what toby's peter told him that would be compelling to see on screen but let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe to